good evening, everybody. Uh, please let us know if you hear me. Professor Flug, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you perfectly. Okay. I hope everybody else is hearing us. Yes. Okay, so, so we will begin. So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening. Tonight marks the second webinar in our series this week and the fifth in the past two weeks. If you missed the previous ones, you're welcome to check out the recordings on our YouTube. We will continue to bring you these webinars thanks to our inspiring and informative Hebrew University experts. We can't think of a better way to get a unique and informed perspective on this crisis we are facing around the world. As we know, we are very concerned not only of the issue of public health, but also the implication of the coronavirus on the economy. Today, we have the great pleasure to host Professor Karnit Flug. Professor Flug is the former governor of the Central Bank of Israel and is a senior lecturer in economics at the Hebrew University. Professor Flug will give an inside view on the impact of the coronavirus on the Israeli economy, and hopefully she will share some good news. After her lecture, you're welcome to ask questions raising your digital hand. Thank you all for participating, and Professor Flug, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, and it's a great pleasure to, to be here. Um, um, as I put in the title, it's just very early thoughts uh, about the economic consequences of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, where uh, it's a very rapidly uh, evolving uh, crisis. And uh, we are, there is a lot that we don't know, but I'll try to give you some of my initial thoughts about what we can know uh, at this stage. Uh, the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic and the measures taken by governments around the globe in an attempt to, co to contain its spread are dragging the world into a rapidly evolving economic crisis. A global recession seems inevitable, but its depth and duration are highly uncertain. Uh, the latter will depend on the evolution of the disease, on the severity and the duration of the restrictive measures imposed, and on the nature and the magnitude of economic policy response. And in this respect, uh, Israel is no exception. The first restrictive measures were taken already in early February, uh, by restricting the travel from China and then from the rest of Asia. Uh, and the phrase that we've been hearing, all of us, I think, across the globe, has been flattening the curve. And the main concern has been to try and slow the spread of the disease uh, so that uh, we will have a slower evolution of the uh, contagion. And in this way, uh, we will uh, reduce the number of people that would need to be in intensive care or uh, taken care by, uh, by the uh, health system to a level that can be dealt with uh, in terms of the capacity of the healthcare system. Uh, the measures have been escalating and we keep uh, actually getting new restrictions uh, every few days, including uh, tonight, further restrictions. And clearly these measures uh, now uh, start, have, have already started having a very uh, substantial uh, economic uh, cost. Uh, much of the economy is shut down. Uh, the uh, initial uh, effect of the initial closure of the economy or of the country in terms of uh, its ex external borders were on specific sectors uh, like tourism and air travel and uh, uh, culture uh, and restaurants. 
but now with the recent restrictions, uh, which are much broader, basically much of the uh, economic activity uh, is shut down. There are very severe restrictions on movement. There are uh, very severe restrictions on the number of uh, employees that can be in the premises uh, of any uh, establishment. Uh, no gatherings are, uh, uh, are allowed and so on and so forth. So the economic consequences of this shutdown uh, together with the very sharp decline in the value of financial assets and the, together with the, a sharp uh, drop in uh, private consumption partly due to the restrictions on commerce and partly due to the fact that people have been laid off uh, and the uncertainty is soaring, investment is down. So obviously the economic consequences will be uh, very severe. Now, uh, it's very early actually to assess what will be the extent of these economic uh, consequences because as I already said, the length of the period of restrictions, the uh, severity of restrictions, and as we've seen over the last week, uh, these restrictions keep being intensified and uh, the uh, measures that the governments and central banks uh, and in Israel as well will uh, decide to take to alleviate some of the costs uh, in terms of unemployment insurance and so on. All of these will matter very much to how severe this uh, um, downturn or recession actually will be. Uh, um, uh, there is a recent estimate, actually uh, it was presented today, today or yesterday by the Bank of Israel, who made an estimate of what will be the output, output loss as a result of the restrictions that the government imposed on economic activity. And uh, these measures are only the very direct or the, the estimate here refers to the direct effect of the restrictions on economic activity on overall output, on GDP. And uh, what you can see in this table is that uh, the restrictions uh, or the extent of the, uh, of the shutdown is uh, very important in in terms of the severity of the decline in output and also the length of the period uh, in which these restrictions will be in place. So for example, if the level of restrictions are more or less at the level at which they were yesterday, that was presented by the Bank of Israel yesterday, uh, the loss of output as a result of these restrictions, if they only last till the end of April will be about 50 billion shekel, which is about three and a half percent of GDP. If these restrictions are extended until the end of May, the uh, loss is soaring to 90 billion shekel or 6.4 percent of GDP. Now, if the restrictions are, intensif are intensified, and the number of uh, economic establishments and businesses that can stay open will be diminished, or the number of employees that can be there in the premises at, at any given time will be further reduced. Now the restrictions are to 30% of overall uh, employees in every establishment. Then if the restrictions start to be lifted uh, by the end of April, uh, we're already talking about almost 5% of GDP in terms of output loss, and it can reach the, the incredible proportions of 9% of GDP, 127 billion shekels, 
uh, if uh, the restrictions are, um, will be in place until the end of May. So what you can actually gather from this, uh, um, from this table is one, uh, the, the cost of the shutdown, the cost of this uh, uh, attempt to flatten the curve of the number of people that get uh, into hospitals uh, and being, uh, being uh, uh, con uh, con getting the disease, uh, the cost of these measures is very high and the severity of the measures and the duration will be crucial. Uh, when we, but these are only the direct costs of the uh, restrictions. But as I mentioned, there are also indirect costs which are related to the decline in consumption as the result of uh, the rapid rise in unemployment because many, many people are laid off and uh, uncertainty which also tends to uh, cause people to sort of reduce sharply uh, their consumption because of fear of what's coming. There are also uh, restrictions on the ability to actually go to, uh, to the stores. Many, most of the malls are closed, so consumption uh, is going to be uh, highly, uh, very severely uh, diminished. Uh, and uh, if uh, we add to that also uh, the decline in global demand, as, uh, as I said at the very beginning, and as you all know, we're talking about a global crisis. We already see a very sharp decline in the uh, world trade. So also those uh, companies or those firms that continue to uh, to produce now may face difficulties in actually selling because global demand is declining. And all of that together uh, leads to an expectation that we, will, uh, that we are already in a recession and uh, the, the latest estimate or the estimate that was presented recently by the Bank of Israel uh, which is based on the less, on the least severe scenario, I should add, the scenario that assumes that the uh, restrictions are not intensified and they, that they start being lifted up or uh, uh, dim diminished by the end of April, uh, they uh, show the, uh, that, that's actually the projection. Let me backtrack for a little and say something about the state of the Israeli economy entering into this crisis. As you all know, the Israeli economy until three weeks ago was in a fairly strong uh, shape. Uh, we had a fairly uh, solid growth, a very uh, strong labor market, a very low unemployment. In fact, the rate of unemployment uh, was uh, in 2019 3.3 percent. Uh, employment was at a record high. Wages were going up. Uh, so the economy, in terms of the real activity, was at a very good step, a stage uh, entering into this crisis. Another areas of strengths of the economy were the fact that uh, we have uh, positive or current account surplus. We've had that for a very long time. Our uh, public finances or government finances are reasonable. There was some relaxation of uh, fiscal discipline recently, but the debt relative to GDP is at 60%, which is a uh, relative to other advanced economies, not a high debt. Uh, and also our banks are very strong. Uh, they have accumulated capital, uh, capital and liquidity. So they have cushions to withstand a severe shock. So all of these uh, attributes of the economy 
uh, imply that the economy is quite resilient. And if you are uh, to be uh, faced with a shock, with a severe shock, it's very important that at the starting point you are, you are with a solid economy and with a resilient uh, financial system. So that's important to note before we get into the, uh, the projections for next year. So you see here uh, the growth rate uh, of uh, the economy in 2019. The Bank of Israel expects a decline of two and a half percent uh, in 2020. And again, I want to stress that, under, that this uh, projection is based on a fairly, uh, I would say somewhat optimistic um, uh, assumptions that there is no intensification of the restrictions of, on economic activity and on movement and that the restrictions will start being lifted by the end of April. Uh, now, one of the things that we have already, one of the phenomena that we have already seen uh, at a very rapid uh, pace over the last uh, week or so is the soaring numbers of people uh, applying for unemployment benefits. Uh, most of these people are temporarily laid off and some of them are laid off. Uh, the number of people that are now uh, seeking uh, unemployment benefit, if you sum them together, there are about 20% of the overall labor force. So if we would count all of them as unemployed, we're, talk we're talking about unemployment, reaching 20%. We haven't been with these numbers for a very, very long time. Now, in terms of the actual measure, those who are temporarily laid off in the official statistics are not counted as unemployed, and therefore the number that is projected here for unemployment, which is a, an average uh, for the year, is 7%. Uh, but uh, again here, uh, it is expected that some of the people, and hopefully not a very large proportion of the people who are currently laid off, will not get their jobs back. So the unemployment numbers can actually uh, be much higher than that. And uh, just noting that uh, even with these very optimistic assumptions, uh, the unemployment figure is doubling. Um, the expectation is that if uh, the, all the restrictions are, are gradually lift, lifted uh, around mid-April, uh, the economy will actually rebound quite strongly. And uh, we see here a projection for quite a positive outlook for 2021. Uh, this is assuming that really the, uh, this outbreak of the coronavirus will be a one time and that there will be uh, solutions by uh, in some time, which would mean that there will not be any further restrictions um, going forward. One other aspect of the resilience of the Israeli economy, which also improves the uh, probability of a fairly strong rebound going, uh, going forward once restrictions are lifted, is that Israel has quite a lot of experience with, uh, with shocks, with dealing with shocks, and with recovering from shocks. Uh, as uh, you all know, once in a while we have security issues, we have uh, secure, um, um, some tension, and our experience is that uh, usually once the uh, calm is coming back, the economy tends to rebound quite quickly. And again, the fact that we have a solid financial system will help uh, the, uh, the economy recover once it is 
uh, once the restrictions are over. But there is one very important element will be, which will be very crucial in how the economy uh, will recover or the extent to which the economy recover and how quickly it will recover. And that's related to uh, what will be the policy that the government will implement in order to uh, alleviate uh, the effects of the negative shock and also to support the recovery once uh, once the, the restrictions are uh, are um, uh, lifted. So far, the government announced several uh, measures, uh, and I will talk about them in a minute. But I would say that the overall magnitude of the government response has been relatively modest so far. Um, uh, the government uh, has announced that it, will, uh, uh, that it will increase substantially credit, uh, which is government guaranteed credit to small and medium businesses. This is a very important measure in order for small businesses to be able to sort of bridge for a time when they have no, uh, no um, um, income. However, uh, this measure requires also a personal guarantee uh, for, these, uh, for the credit, for these loans that are given by banks with government guarantee. But this personal guarantee may deter many small businesses who face huge uncertainty from actually utilizing this measure. Uh, another uh, policy that has been uh, undertaken in order to alleviate the situation in the markets and to pump liquidity into the market are measures taken by the uh, Bank of Israel, um, uh, fairly uh, diverse measures in order to uh, support the flow of credit, the continued flow of credit uh, by banks. Some regulations have been relaxed in order to allow banks to continue lending to uh, people who are uh, households and to small businesses who are in uh, a temporary, uh, with a temporary difficulty, and they were encouraged to actually continue lending. And here, the fact that the uh, banks have cushions of capital and liquidity is very important. Um, another uh, measure taken by the central bank has been to purchase government bonds, a uh, very large quantity, and this is supposed to uh, reduce the uh, yield on government bonds, and actually this signals the interest rates to all the credit markets. And that has been, again, in support of actually uh, having a, a smooth flow of credit uh, in the time of uh, need of credit. In terms of, of the government measures, uh, the, those individuals who were laid off, a, a temporary laid off or permanently uh, fired, uh, will, will be uh, eligible, all of them, to unemployment benefits. The government announced uh, the reduction in the length of period that is needed or required in order to gain eligibility for unemployment benefits. Uh, and uh, there is still a question regarding the period of eligibility, which in Israel is relatively modest. And I hope that the government will announce that eligibility will be extended at least until uh, the period when the economy starts uh, actually recovering and the restrictions are uh, uh, lifted. There has been some postponement of, um, of some uh, measures, taxes, uh, local taxes and uh, VAT taxes but the postponement so far has been quite modest. I believe that uh, in, some, uh, in, in a short time, when further measures are uh, announced, 
uh, this will be also extended. There is one very serious obstacle uh, for taking uh, broader measures by the government and providing the uh, fiscal stimulus that is necessary to deal with the current uh, crisis. And that is the fact that, as you all know, we don't only have um, economic crisis and public health crisis, but also political crisis. And the current government is an interim government. It has not been able to pass a budget. And in fact, the government right now is operating uh, on a temporary budget that is based on the previous year budget, on the budget of 2019, and it can only spend each month one twelfth of the budget for 2019. This budget has been very restrictive even before the crisis, but given the crisis and the extent of the crisis, um, the importance of actually having a Expansionary uh, policy is really uh, very crucial. And at the moment, unless there is an agreement within the Knesset uh, to pass a budget, we are still operating with a very restrict uh, restrictive budget. Uh, this implies that we, if we do not pass a budget which allows to really uh, in increase the support to the unemployed, to businesses, to small businesses, and to all of those that are directly affected by the closure imposed by the government, we will have a pro-cyclical rather than an anti-cyclical fiscal policy. Uh, an anti-cyclical policy would mitigate uh, the effect of the crisis. And you can see in the, in the graph here, that if the government takes very severe mitigating um, policy, very strong fiscal policy, it would flatten the curve, but this time we're talking about flattening the, uh, the recession curve. So it's important to take measures that would flatten not only the public health uh, um, curve, but also the recession curve. And I definitely hope that in light of this unprecedented health and economic crisis, our politicians will find a way to join hands to help Israel both to endure and recover from this crisis. So I'll stop here and I'll be very happy to uh, take uh, any questions. Okay, so you can raise your digital hands if you want to uh, make a question. Okay, we have um, Peter, uh, no, he disappeared. Okay, it's Slil Razuli. Ah, Peter, okay, you can ask your question. My question is, what is you, um, uh, first of all, thank you for this very thorough and interesting presentation. Uh, I would, I'm interested in finding out what do you see as the impact on the private equity industry in Israel related, obviously, to high tech? Well, um, I, I I think that uh, it's, uh, we will probably see some effect on the uh, resources available to this industry, uh, but it's too early to assess the overall impact. We will see an impact. By the way, we do see some impact on the industry, uh, on the high tech industry generally also because of the inability to convene. And we know that uh, usually uh, investments are uh, based also on personal interaction and uh, all the impediments to that are probably also uh, affecting this industry. 
but I think it's too early to say how the what will be the effect, the overall effect on on resources directed to this industry. I think there are some areas which are doing very well. Uh, all these uh, um, all the technologies that we're now utilizing very extensively, and there are a lot of companies in Israel actually that are developing. Uh, these technologies, I'm sure they're going to do very well. Thank you. Okay, we have now Slil Razuli. Slil? Hey, hello. Hello. Hi. Hey. Uh, economically speaking, uh, do you think that like flattening the curve of the disease uh, would affect the extent of the recession because uh, as I understand some other governments are acting as if it's an equation between an economical crisis or a public health crisis. Well I think that at, at the early stage it, it didn't seem like there is a conflict when uh, initially when the borders were closed and in Israel, by the way, this was very effective because Israel is uh, for that matter an island and the initial restrictions seemed uh, and we were all hoping that they would be very short. There didn't seem to be a conflict be between the extent of the restrictions and the economic considerations. I think at this stage there seems to be uh, some conflict, and I, I think that governments need to find a, some balance between the two, flattening the two curves. Uh, I think that uh, implying further uh, restrictions now on the fairly severely restricted, as it is, economic activity uh, will. Uh, probably uh, increase the price uh, in terms of the, the extent of the recession and it will make uh, recovering much more difficult. Thank you. Okay, um, we have now Atar Porat. Hi, um, so we've been hearing a lot about, um, can you hear me? Yes. So we've been hearing a lot um, how one should protect uh, themselves from the recession. You know, you should buy these stocks, you should invest in gold or stuff like that. And since uh, none of us has ever lived through a major recession in our lives, uh, I would suppose, um, what would you suggest uh, uh, to do to protect oneself uh, against the upcoming recession? Well, I'm not in the business of giving uh, advice uh, on how to um, how to invest on or at what stage uh, to go into the market or out of the market. I think the only thing is not to panic and to take very sort of um, uh, decisions based on on your needs and also on uh, we need stronger nerves at this period. But I, I can't give uh, investment advice. Thank you. Uh, okay, we have now Omer F. Omer. Hello. Um, a common saying is that every crisis is also an opportunity. So, in your uh, opinion, what opportunities should the government take when uh, dealing with this advice to? conduct reforms or to make changes? I think at the early stage of the recovery, we should definitely uh, invest in infrastructure. In Israel, we have a lot of deficiencies in infrastructure, which are affecting our growth. And I think that uh, a, so a very thoroughly uh, uh, devised plan to, uh, to speed up some of the major investments in infrastructure are definitely uh, something that we will, uh, that it would be good policy 
to support the recovery. I think there are some other areas uh, which I think this crisis demonstrated that need uh, to be uh, looked at. Uh, for example, um, our public health, which has been, uh, we have a, still a good uh, public health system, but it has been neglected and I would say even starved for too long. That's something that we should also invest in and uh, investment in hospitals, in, uh, in schools and so on are, in, uh, are areas that we need investment and the recovery stage from a recession would be a good time uh, to do that. There are some other areas. I think the fact that we can uh, do a lot of our work uh, from, from home the potential there uh, has been uh, is is growing, and I think this uh, this period demonstrates that we are that the potential uh, is only very uh, partially actually utilized, and um, the the encouragement to work from uh, home can uh, be very. Um, uh, positive in terms of the environment, there would be less uh, uh, less congestion in the roads and so on. So I think we will find a different mix. Even people my age are finding that actually you can do a lot with this technology more than we were uh, willing to try earlier on. So there are various uh, areas, um, and I think that uh, really at the stage of the recovery. Uh, we should uh, invest wisely in uh, areas which will uh, support the growth of productivity in Israel, which has been a challenge for a long time. So that was a clue. Okay, we have now Amos Rimon. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, first of all, thank you for your lecture. It was interesting. Uh, I wanted to uh, take a different uh, um, angle uh, to the uh, question. Um, we can see that the uh, reaction of the U.S. government is uh, a lot less acute than uh, the ones in uh, Western Europe, in uh, Italy, in Germany, uh, even in the U.K. recently. Um, how do you think this will affect uh, the Israeli market since we are very uh, codependent on the uh, American one? Uh, the approach you mean in terms of health or in terms of economic policy? Uh, of both. In, both. Um, well, I think it's too early to say. I think on economic policy, actually, the package that was uh, passed yesterday is uh, of a very substantial proportion with the idea of doing exactly uh, the kind of thing that would uh, flatten the recession curve. But I think that, uh, um, the I mean, one uh, question that I don't have an answer on is whether the fact that uh, uh, so far it seems that there is um, not a very good control on actually knowing uh, how many people have uh, been uh, affected, uh, con contracted the, uh, the virus, and the health system this doesn't seem to be handling or there is not enough of a public health system to actually uh, handle the situation. So I'm not sure what the result will be and whether it will prolong the period of uh, eventually uh, restrictions uh, that will probably be imposed uh, at a later stage and maybe for a longer period of time. So I think it's too early to assess whether it's working. I know that they, in, in Britain, they initially uh, wanted to uh, apply less severe measures but very quickly they um, actually changed their approach and now they're uh, also implementing very uh, strict measures of uh, restricting uh, activities and, and gatherings and so on. Thank you very much.
we have Aviv Rosenman. שומעים אותי? אני לא אביב רוזמן, אבל לא. בפרופסור, אני רוצה לשאול, האם יש איזה פורקאסט או פרסידנט לגבי מה שקורה לגבי האקונומיה של ישראל, אם הקורנט מאזרות יעלו לגבי יותר מ-3 או 5 חודשים? The, I haven't seen any estimates. I, I, I'm afraid that what we have seen uh, until the end of May uh, suggests a, a very deep recession. But looking at what is happening in China and in South Korea, I'm actually optimistic that uh, what uh, that they the period or the duration of uh, these very restrictive measures will not be very long. Um, if they will need to be longer, I think the, the balance between the need to flatten the curve in terms of uh, the number of people uh, contracting the disease will be reassessed. Because Thank you very much. The, econ the economic price will be too high. Thank you very much. Okay, Mal Mario Blezer. Blezer? Yes, hi. Hi, 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 Khalid. Actually, this is hi. a Hi, 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 Khalid. Uh, speaking uh, for both of us, if you wish. Um, thank you so much. This was really brilliant. Um, and um, uh, extremely timely in terms of understanding the challenges Israel itself faces because of the lack of a um, um, uh, potentially aggressive uh, fiscal policy given the, the political impasse. And that's what really sets apart Israel, it seems to me. Um, I am more familiar working at the LSE of the European context. So we we'll see that in addition, of course, the US big package, Germany announced a 5% of GDP stimulus which is at the Eurozone, it translates into about a 10 percentage point of GDP, which is not very big, um, but still much more than what we are talking about here. Uh, UK has announced a 5 percentage point of fiscal stimulus, um, uh, and still the feeling uh, on the continent is that it's still pretty small. So there is a substantial, but still pretty small relative, even from, uh, with the global financial crisis. So my question is that, whether the Bank of Israel's um, even scarier scenario is not too optimistic. If you see, if you believe that there indeed needs to be a much bigger fiscal, uh, counter-cyclical counter um, uh, push than, than what is happening even in the more aggressive countries and what is not happening as you described uh, very clearly here in Israel. So in a sense, the 9%, even worst case scenario, end of uh, May restrictions, may be an optimistic one, 9% decline, if there is no unit, uh, you know, emergency budget and, and, uh, and, uh, and that is passed through with a very significant measure. Yeah, I, I, I'm afraid that without, this, without a very substantial fiscal policy, fiscal package, uh, things will be, uh, we will be in a deeper recession. I, I agree that this is crucial. And, uh, you know, all the measures that have been uh, announced so far, um, if, they, if there is no new budget, it means that they will come at the expense of other uh, expenditures and the uh, 2019 budget, which is the budget that is now operating for 2020, has, o has already been very restricted in many areas. As you know, even just for population growth, you have to have a higher budget. But certainly, if you have to, uh, to uh, divert resources to the uh, health system, and to the police and to all the uh, agencies that directly deal with the crisis, it means that there is 
going to be very little, if anything, that can be actually uh, uh, allocated to help businesses. Uh, and I, I certainly agree that uh, if there is no very substantial fiscal uh, package, uh, our um, recession might be uh, much deeper. Okay, so we have now Filipos Papatanos. Hi there, can you hear me? <clears throat> yeah. Thanks so much for your uh, very clear presentation. I have kind of two questions. One is, what is the importance of the relative timing of reactivation of our economy? Like, we, if, we, if we think of it of a, of as a reactivation, what is the importance of, of the timing of this in relation to other countries, right? Like, at the moment, we are all talking, except maybe Trump, of closing down our economies. India is doing it, South Africa is doing it, most of Western Europe is doing it. Um, when does it make sense to do that? And my other question is regarding the two curves and like what are the policies that we need to take regarding the two curves? I mean, some things are going to affect both curves in a positive way. For example, uh, credit, financial support to individuals, small businesses, corporation industries but some will be in opposition. For example, if you want to help consumption, you're going to have to risk the population. Um, so what do you think are the cost benefit analysis that need to be going on right now in the government? Yeah. So I think for flattening the, cur the first curve, it's clear that the more you restrict movement and the more you restrict the uh, people being together, in a factory or in any type of business, uh, the, the slower will be the process of uh, actually uh, of less interaction you have, the flatter you will have the, uh, the first curve, which is the curve of people getting the disease. Uh, but the, uh, the more you restrict the more severe is the uh, extent to which you have an output loss. And that was actually uh, in the estimate made by the Bank of Israel, uh, they talked about 35% of, uh, of shutdown or 50% of shutdown. Uh, so I think clearly if these restrictions are more severe, uh, the extent to which the decline in activity will be, uh, it will show in a, a more severe decline in activity. There may be a trade-off between, and that I'm not sure that I have a good answer uh, about, if it would be clear that you can have a complete shutdown, but for a very short period of time, and that is it, there, I think the, the trade-off between a very severe shutdown for a very short period of time or a partial shutdown for a slightly longer period, that's where there is a trade-off, which I'm not sure that I have a good answer about. Uh, now, regarding your, I'm not sure which trade-off you talked about in your other, in your second question. Uh, um, it was just, yeah, I was just asking, you know, what are the policies that the government needs to be considering at the moment? Um, I mean, clearly they have decided to, to lower both curves, uh, to lower the mortality curve at the moment or the, the health curve at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. But, for example, doing a big investment and a big bailout package will also flatten the curve of the, um, of the economic or the recessionary crisis. Yeah, flattening the recession curve, uh, is actually by doing a, the kind of policies that we talked about, a, a major fiscal package, which will include support for the unemployed, support for the self-employed. Uh, by the way, I, I didn't get into all the details, but for example, people who are over retirement age, if they work, they're not eligible for any uh, unemployment benefit that could be extended. 
the period for which people get unemployment benefit is in Israel is quite short. That might have to be extended. And uh, I think there is a room also for some direct support for some businesses that were most directly and severely affected by the closure. On top of that, uh, I think very uh, large sums, uh, very large uh, loans and credit, access to credit with government guarantee can also help, again, bridge uh, over this period so that these businesses will actually be there once, uh, once the restrictions are lifted. We want to give them the breathing, uh, the ability to breathe uh, for, the peer, for this period in which they don't have any, uh, any income, so that they will be able to reopen once they're back. Now, another policy that can help that is uh, of the people that are laid off, about 90% are temporary laid off. Uh, one measure that could help uh, actually businesses to get these people back to work if they, uh, the, initial the initial stage at which they get back to work, if they get them back, uh, their wage could be subsidized. That would not entail much further cost uh, for the government because the government in any case pays unemployment benefits to these people. So this unemployment benefit could be converted to wage subsidy for those uh, businesses that reopen and rehire these people who were temporarily laid off. That's an important measure that can be very um, effective at the recovery stage. Thank you. Okay, we have now Gil Schneider. Gil? Gil? Okay. Good evening. Okay. You hear me? Now we hear okay. you. Okay, good evening, Professor, and thanks for the interesting um, uh, presentation. I'm wondering what. Um, what will be the consequences in case of Israel in, the, in your optimistic um, uh, scenario will go back on track uh, in the end of uh, April or in the end of May, while the other um, economics such as Europe and United States will stay behind? How will Israel will be, how, how will uh, Israeli economic will be affected uh, from this? Yeah, so um, that's a good question. Israel is a small open economy. And uh, given that, it is quite exposed to what's happening in the global trade. And the optimistic uh, scenario assumes that gradually also the rest of the global economy is recovering and world trade is recovering. Um, if uh, world trade does not recover and the global economy generally uh, recover very with a very shallow uh, or very slow recovery that will uh, that will slow down the recovery of the Israeli economy. About thirty something percent of our uh, output is export, and um, we need the markets to be there in order for this uh, ex exports to actually also contribute to the recovery. So uh, the, the extent of the recovery, the strength of the recovery will definitely depend among other things also on the global economy. Thank you. Okay, David Wolach. Yes, good evening. Um, I would like uh, to, to know how you see the weakness of the shekel. Uh, what is the justification for the weakness of the shekel? And how do you see uh, it performing um, after this uh, pandemic? Yeah, well, the shekel has weakened uh, somewhat in the last uh, 
three weeks, although it had been fluctuating uh, quite a bit. I have to say that um, and when I heard you talking about the weakness of the shekel, it sort of, it, it sounded strange to me because during my tenure and also as a governor and also until three weeks ago, one of the concerns of the Bank of Israel has been the strength of the shekel. Um, now, the recent weakness has to do with the investment of institutional investors abroad, that as a result of uh, the decline in the value of assets, they needed more, uh, needed activity to close some of their exposure in terms of foreign exchange. Uh, but I've already seen some, uh, the shekel actually somewhat strengthening there. Uh, it's uh, um, the fact that the Bank of Israel actually injected liquidity also in foreign exchange helped alleviate this temporary pressure on the shekel. Uh, which, by the way, the fact that Israel has large foreign, uh, foreign currency reserves, the Bank of Israel has large foreign currency reserves, is uh, very uh, helpful and also is, I, I would say, another factor that helps the resilience of the economy because there is uh, the ability to use the reserves if you need both for liquidity or uh, if there would be any other uh, needs related to the crisis. And how do you see the future of uh, the currency <laughs> going? If, because yeah. well, if you compare it, uh, I must say, if you compare the handling of uh, Israel of the pandemic by comparison to other countries, uh, like in Europe or even the States or Canada, uh, I think Israel is doing pretty well. Uh, and uh, so I question why there should be a weakness in the currency. Um, and I wonder what you think about the future of the, of the currency. Yeah, so the weakness of the currency, I already said, it's related to the exposure of uh, institutional investors abroad. Regarding the future of the currency, I will not try to speculate. Thank you. Okay, Jonathan Lux. Thank you. I think my question has effectively been answered uh, with the last question. But thank you, Professor, for your excellent talk. Thank you. Okay, so now we have Daniel Farkas. Hi, how are you? Good night. Hello. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Uh, yeah, it's slightly interrupted, but let's try. No, I think it doesn't work. So let's go to Barak Sass. Hi, yes, thank you for your time. Um, my question is a global question. Do you think that we will see a trend toward Keynesian economy? And if so, do Western governments, especially in Europe, have the resources to do that? Um, whether we'll see Keynesian economics, you mean um, measures, fiscal stimulus, that's I guess what you have in mind. And what we've been seeing uh, around the world is actually large stimulus packages uh, being uh, implemented. Uh, I, I'm not sure that I know uh, uh, that that is the case for most of the economies, but many economies that we've been following are adopting very expansionary fiscal policies. Uh, whether they will have the resources to do it, um, they will have to, I mean, they, they, I can talk about the case of Israel. Okay. Uh, and in our case, we will see a very substantial increase in the uh, deficit. We will probably see a 
a substantial rise in our debt to GDP ratio. It took a long time to get it down to 60%. It will probably go up to around 70% or even more by the time this crisis is over. And that means that there will be a need to start fiscal consolidation program once we have recovered. But I think that the cost of not doing this uh, Indian uh, fiscal policy will be much more severe. So I think that this is uh, what we've learned since the Great Depression, that fiscal um, policy, large stimulus, works to get a, an economy out of a, um, of a deep recession. Thank you. Okay, we will have now our last question, Mr. Glasner. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm wondering, Professor, if you have, uh, or the Bank of Israel has been running any models in regard to stimulus that's been created by all nations around the world and the unintended consequences that, uh, that may occur once we get, uh, once we get past the, uh, the virus and, and going down the, uh, the timeline in the future. Should we be more concerned about dramatic deflation or creating uncontrollable inflation? That's an existential question for sure, but I'd like you to try to give your best answer on that. Yeah, it's a very big question. I'm not aware of a global model at the Bank of Israel. Um, my sense is that, uh, again, I can talk about the Israeli case. And we have not seen, uh, or, or maybe even more broadly, during the global financial crisis, in order to evo avoid an even deeper crisis, uh, governments took very substantial measures, both monetary and fiscal. Uh, and I think that uh, in areas where these uh, measures were decisive and substantial, they helped uh, to actually uh, reduce the duration of the uh, crisis, of the recession, uh, and they supported the recovery, and we have not seen inflation. So I think that um, I wouldn't worry at this stage about inflation. So it's something for the future to worry about. Yeah, we, I mean, I think that once we will recover, we will need to go back to normal in, or start a process of normalization on the, in the monetary front, which, uh, some uh, countries were in the process of this normalization before some uh, new shocks uh, derailed them from this normalization. And we will need to start a fiscal consolidation program. But I think that at this stage, uh, we should, uh, we should uh, focus our um, efforts on how to avoid a deeper uh, recession than uh, to worry about the uh, future consequences. I think there will be time to deal with those. I think we have very immediate problems to deal with. Right? <laughs> and hopefully we have good leaders at all the central banks in the world. I certainly agree that good leaders uh, are very necessary. Thank you. Okay, so thank you to everybody. Thank you a lot, Professor Flug. And um, hope to meet you tomorrow for the next webinar. And you will uh, receive the invitation for the next week webinars very soon. Thank you to all and good evening. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks.